Hi guys and welcome to a very special video because today we are welcoming a brand new member to the Viking Air Gunner family, the 177 600mm FX Pantera. The video will be divided into two segments. First up, I'll go through the gun in detail explaining you why this gun is so special. And after that, I'll take it to the range and see how it actually shoots at 100 meters. So if you already know the gun and just want to skip that part and go directly to the shooting, you can go to this place on the timeline. And with that said, let's take a closer look at the gun. Let's start out with the barrel. The barrel of the Pantera comes in three different lengths, 5, 6 and 700 mm. If you order the 500, you'll get the STX Superior Liner, which is shooting both pellets and the lighter slugs and by lighter slugs I mean perhaps up to 15 grains. So if you want to shoot heavier slugs than that, you need to go for the 600 like this or the 700 since they come with the STX Superior Heavy liner in it. Around the liners you find this carbon fiber barrel sleeve and it's pre-installed in the gun so you don't have to go and buy that after uh, you bought the gun, which is pretty nice. Looking at the gun, this is how you receive it, so there's no moderator included, but it has a half inch UNF thread uh, here at the end, so you can fit any moderator you seem fit. I'm using my Huma Model 40 that I'm also using at my Impact M3, and I think that it reduces the sound extremely well. From the moderator and uh, down to here, you find the shroud, and from here and down to the main block, you find one of the things that makes this gun a true masterpiece, because FX decided to add the plenum inside the barrel. It does a few things. It takes the regulated air closer to the valve that is right in here, and it also stiffens up the barrel uh, to, to make it extremely stiff. The size of the plenum uh, in this uh, 600 and the 700, because those are the same sizes of plenum, is uh, 156 cc. In the 500, it has a plenum size of uh, 62 cc, which is uh, still uh, a, a very big plenum. A big plenum makes uh, the gun much more air, air efficient, and uh, potentially you can uh, uh, you can pull a lot of power out of this. Uh, Pantera. Underneath the barrel you find this uh, Arca Swiss rail um, and in case you're wondering it does not have any contact with the barrel itself. For the Arca rail to be so long um, allows you to uh, attach your bipod very far from the action and this makes it so much more stable uh, when you're shooting it. There are a few uh, options. Um, on this piece, uh, there are these uh, M-lock slots, and uh, there are some uh, some uh, threaded holes uh, here on the side. Um, one thing that uh, I'm using these uh, holes for is uh, my bubble level. So um, I'm just um, placing it uh, right here. So when I'm shooting, I have a straight line, so I can see it uh, out here. On the opposite side. I am uh, mounting a piece of uh, Picatinny uh, because uh, I like to have my uh, crony uh, attached uh, when I'm shooting uh, all the time. I don't like to have my crony hanging uh, from the barrel because it affects uh, the accuracy. So when uh, mounting this on this other side, uh, I can have my, my crony uh, here all the time. So with that said, I think we covered the barrel, so uh, let's move on. Okay, moving on to the main block or the dynamic block as it's called. This block is uh, the exact same on the Pantera as it is on the uh, FX uh, Dynamic. And um, from what I've heard, uh, it's, um, it's a block that you might uh, see in uh, future rifles as well. But yeah, let's dive into it. Uh, here on top you have a Picatinny rail um, that's uh, tilted uh, 20 MOA and it's divided here in the middle uh, with a slot for the magazine. And let's talk a little bit uh, about the magazine because <clears throat> it's almost the same as in um, the Crown and the Wildcat and the Maverick. But 
this is just a, a bit wider uh, to accommodate uh, some uh, bigger slugs, like for instance if you're shooting the 40 grainers in a 22 caliber. So what uh, FX has done is that, I'll just show you, <clears throat> they have made the lid just um, a little bit wider and then they've cut this groove uh, into the magazine so that uh, you can fit uh, the longer and heavier slugs. Moving on to the cocking handle, um, because this is a purpose-built rifle, um, this is a, this is made for PRS, and apparently, don't ask me about PRS because I don't know uh, much about it. Um, it's required that you can um, that that the gun will stay in the open position or or the yeah this position uh, between shots, um, and when you lock it again, it it has this tiny little snap. Uh, so it is uh, a, a bit different from uh, what you will find in an impact, but I must be honest, uh, the first week of uh, shooting the gun, I noticed it and I, I didn't really like it, but after uh, one week, you don't really notice it at all. So um, if this is uh, holding you back, uh, don't worry, you'll get used to it. Down here you have uh, safety. Um, and. Um, what else? Um, yeah, you, you can see this uh, this handle. Uh, it's more vertical than you will find on the other guns. Um, I can't say that I'm a I'm a fan of uh, of this handle. Uh, I'd rather one that's uh, tilted a, a, a bit uh, backwards. But um, yeah, once again, I'm getting used to it, uh, so I might not uh, end up uh, switching it. But let's look at the other side of the gun. Looking at the left side of the block, you see that there's a bracket with uh, two gauges on it. The first one is for the regulator and the, last one, the, the second one is for fill pressure. I have changed mine uh, for the regulator uh, with the one from Segment and it's digital. Uh, and I like to have it uh, digital because I want to be 100% sure that every time I pull the trigger, the pressure is the same. I had no doubt at all that I wanted the, the segment Gen 2 because it's so accurate uh, and it's watertight and, and it has a battery that lasts like forever. And uh, on top of that, I think it looks damn cool. And if I was to put a, a, a brand on it, uh, I would say that it's like the Ferrari of gauges. So if you're in the market for a, a, a gauge that's digital, this is the one to go for. Looking at the tuning system, uh, it's not much different from uh, what we know from the impact. We have a power wheel and we have the quick tune system. Um, the power wheel, uh, one click on the power wheel is um, roughly the same as five clicks on the quick tune system. And this makes it so easy to tune the gun uh, to the exact uh, velocity that you're looking for. So with one click uh, on the quick tune system, you can uh, adjust it uh, between one and two feet per second. So that makes it uh, very, very accurate. But now let's talk a little bit about the internals of the gun. And uh, starting with the valve, uh, that's uh, right in here uh, and just uh, close to the plenum. Uh, that makes it uh, very, very efficient because the air uh, does not have to travel that far to, to get to the valve. The valve is a, a short impulse, high pressure valve, so it is very, very accurate. Um, you can see it when you start to shoot the gun that it has a very low uh, spread in velocity between each shot. The probe that you find on the on, on the pan Pantera is uh, um, one that looks like a pellet probe, but uh, having shot it uh, for yeah uh, quite a while now, uh, I can see that it uh, it works uh, pretty well. Uh, but uh, if uh, a pin probe comes along uh, at uh, one point, I'll be happy to test it out. The last thing uh, I want to mention is the trigger. That's the same as you know in uh, most of uh, the other uh, FXs. It has a uh, first and second stage and you can and adjust them both and um, from my perspective uh, this is the way I, I, I like a, a trigger to be and I'm very happy with the trigger system on this gun as well. Now let's look at the stock. This is where the Pantera and the Dynamic are different. Where the Pantera has a stock, the, uh, the Dynamic uh, has uh, the bottle uh, as a stock. 
It has this uh, adjustable cheek riser, which is uh, very, very nice. And it also has an adjustable buttstock. So you can see that it, um, the buttstock uh, not only adjusts uh, in length, it, it also uh, adjusts in, um, in angle. Here you have the, the fill nibble and uh, here you have the 300cc bottle. The reason for this uh, small bottle is, as I mentioned earlier, that uh, this is a purple built, built uh, rifle. So when you're shooting uh, PRS, you don't really need that many shots. Uh, so uh, 300cc uh, is enough. But for me, um, I'm not into PRS at all. Uh, I hardly know what it is. So I decided to, um, to buy a, a bottle uh, and, and this uh, drop down um, uh, mount from uh, Sabre Tactical uh, to uh, add more air capacity to the rifle. And because I am kind of a magician, I just want to show you how it looks uh, with the uh, front bottle attached. And bam, it's on there. I think it looks uh, pretty good. Uh, and now I have the uh, air capacity of almost 800 uh, cc plus what's in the plenum. One thing uh, that I thought about uh, be, before buying the, the bottle uh, was to, um, if uh, there was room for a 580 cc bottle. And you can see that there is actually uh, a little room left, uh, say maybe uh, four centimeters. So um, I don't know uh, if a 580 cc bottle will uh, fit on there. Uh, so um, yeah, I'll leave it up to you to, to take the chance, but um, uh, I decided to go for the uh, 480 uh, and it seems to, uh, to work out uh, pretty well. Let's go back uh, to the bot stock because there is a, there is a, a thing uh, that I want to show you. Here uh, at the bottom, uh, you can see uh, there's uh, this little slot and uh, that is uh, for a back rider. And uh, would you know it, Sabre Tactical has also made a, a back rider uh, for uh, the Pantera. And it looks like this. And uh, maybe I should try it again, uh, see if it works um, just by snapping my fingers to, to get it on the gun. And would you know it, the back rider is on there. So let me show you uh, up close. This is how it looks. For obvious reasons, I haven't uh, tried it yet. What I forgot to mention, uh, to, uh, speaking about the, uh, the dynamic block, is uh, the regulator. And the regulator is uh, the same amp uh, as you know uh, from, uh, from the impact. It works uh, very well, but the thing that has changed uh, in this gun, the placement of the regulator. Um, on the impact, um, the regulator is, uh, is, is seated uh, uh, like this, but um, in this, uh, the dynamic block, it's uh, seated over here. Uh, so it's much, much more uh, accessible. Um, you do need to, um, to remove this uh, trigger guard uh, when, you, when you want to do some extensive work on it, like if you want to remove it. And one uh, important little thing, when you move the trigger guard, there is um, a small um, spring uh, with a with a three millimeter steel ball um, uh, in it um, that holds the safety. And if you just move the trigger guard, this will drop out of the gun. And uh, I'm talking <laughs> out of experience, uh, so um, just telling you, if you want to do this, uh, be aware of this spring uh, and the ball. So if you want to take it apart, uh, turn the gun upside down and you won't have a problem. And that is basically what I had to say uh, about the Pantera. So now let's take it into uh, the 100 meter range and see how it actually performs. Now the gun's been set up at the range here at 96 meters. And before we start shooting, I want to show you a few changes that I made to the gun. As you can see, I've changed the grip here to an angle grip. It's one that I got from an impact and it fits on here perfectly. Um, as you can see, there's not much room here between the rear bottle and the grip. So if you have very large hands, uh, it might be a problem to you. But with my hands, it's no problem and it fits me perfectly. Next change I've made is uh, the scope. 
because I like to have a lot of magnification when I'm shooting at longer ranges, I decided to test out this um, 5 to 30 by 56 first focal plane scope from Discovery Optics. Um, it fits me very well and um, I'll go much more into detail about this scope in a future video. If you've decided to buy a Pantera or a Dynamic or you're just about to make up your mind, please go to uh, this webpage, it's called Ergon Titans, uh, they're based in Utah, of course this is if you're living in the US. You can uh, follow the link to uh, their webpage in the description of this video, give them a call or contact them uh, via the, the webpage, they're really nice guys and I even believe that they have a discount on, on the guns right now. If you're living in Europe, Go to Arms Gallery in Copenhagen, also nice guys. Funny how I'm surrounded by, by nice guys, but I really am. Um, and place uh, an order there. So with that said, let's go into the testing and see how it performs here at uh, 96 meters. In this test, I'll be shooting the 15 grains uh, NSA. Uh, usually I'll be shooting the 16 grain sands, but uh, simple reason, I just ran out of them. So uh, NSA was up. So, but I believe that they, uh, it's, it's, it will shoot them uh, pretty well anyway. So, let's start out by uh, taking a few ciders and then uh, go for a five shot group. And uh, just measuring up uh, the range, it was actually not uh, 96 meters, but it was 92 meters today, so just above uh, 100 yards. Let's go. bit to the left <laughs> still on the target <laughs> I have the sun in my face, I can't really see how it, <laughs> uh, how it all went, but uh, yeah, let's check it out. <laughs> that was some introduction to the Pantera. Uh, a two centimeter group here at uh, 92 meters in the first attempt. Didn't try to shoot any other groups. This was the first attempt. Um, so I can only say that um, the Pantera likes um, to shoot at long distances and uh, it actually also likes uh, NSA 15 grains. So I can't wait to, to test the, the sands as well. But uh, let's go into a conclusion about the gun. I don't think it comes as a surprise uh, that I really like this gun. but. Uh, what I like it is, um, well, uh, some of the things that I already went through uh, in the walkthrough of the gun. I like the plenum uh, here, I like the, uh, the Arca Swiss rail and that it's uh, extended so far uh, ahead so you can mount your bipod very f uh, close to the front of the gun so that you have a very good balance when you shoot it. Um, the handling of the gun uh, is just very good. Uh, I like that uh, the cheek riser is adjustable. I like that the, you can also do it with, um, with the buttstock. Not that I've uh, uh, done too much about it uh, yet, but I'm sure that uh, I'll, be, um, I'll be using it uh, uh, in, in the future. So, I also like that it's uh, like all the other uh, FX, maybe not like the, the impact, but it's, it's easy to, uh, to adjust. Um, 
the regulator is uh, easy accessible and you have the gauges uh, right, in, right in, in front of you so you can, uh, you can see them uh, while you're shooting. But what I also like is that uh, the dynamic plug, plug is made in a way so that you can uh, change uh, all kinds of things on it. Uh, you can add this, uh, this bottle. Uh, I mean, this is, a, this is really a lifesaver for me because uh, if uh, it only came with this uh, 300 um, um, cc bottle, I wouldn't really be interested because then I'd have to fill all the time. So uh, the fact that you can actually uh, add a, an extra bottle here in the front is, uh, is just yeah, so nice, and I believe that if you if 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 you want to, you might also be able to uh, to add the the, the dual bottle adapter from uh, Saber Tactical. But I'm not too sure about that, so uh, don't take my word on it. But um, the fact that you can add more uh, air capacity to the gun is uh, is very nice because uh, then I can use it for exactly what I want to use it for. If you have seen uh, some of my uh, previous videos, you'll see that uh, at one point I was shooting a 700 mm dynamic. And uh, you might be wondering, where did that go? <laughs> and I, I understand uh, this question because um, going from um, well, deciding uh, which gun uh, to take was uh, pretty easy actually because when I, um, I received that uh, 700 mm dynamic, uh, I, I felt that it was just too close to the impact with the with the impact also shooting the the 700 millimeter so i decided to go for the uh, pantera for uh, at least two reasons and uh, one was that uh, uh, i wanted uh, another barrel uh, so it, it it wasn't the same as uh, i have in the impact so i went for the 600 millimeter uh, and because it is <laughs> a very long gun, because uh, uh, it, it's not a bullpup like the Impact, uh, I also like that it's not that uh, that long, uh, because the 700 millimeter is long. Not that it's uh, like a, a disadvantage, but uh, yeah, it is a long gun. But one thing uh, that um, finally made me change um, uh, my mind uh, about going for the Pantera is that. I really like um, uh, this uh, this pot stock um, because on the dynamic, uh, if you want to change uh, into this, you have to go and buy this piece. On this one, if you want to change uh, it, it into a dynamic, uh, you can just remove the pot stock and then uh, add add a bottle here. Um, so in this, I have both uh, the Pantera and I also have the dynamic, and that is dynamic. <laughs> And of course, one thing that I also like is uh, the accuracy. Uh, you have to, to, to learn how to, uh, to, uh, to adjust it uh, because it's, um, there's, there's yeah, many ways of setting up your gun. Uh, I like uh, to, to well, I found out that if I have my rig set uh, a, a bit high and then uh, turn down the, the power wheel just a little bit, I find it to be, um, to be much more dynamic and, and much more in, in, in harmony. I believe that harmony is, uh, is the right word here. But this is actually also one of the things that I'll be working on uh, in the future, finding the right balance between the regulator and the hammer. So it's no different from, uh, from the other guns. But I think I found a, a pretty good balance here, but this doesn't mean that I, I will stop, uh, I'll stop experimenting because uh, when I get the 16 grain sense I'll of course also uh, be um, be testing those and see at uh, what um, at what what velocity they like to be shot but uh, actually I forgot to say that uh, I was shooting the NSAs at around uh, 980 feet per second uh, which is uh, pretty fast but it, my experience tells me that the NSAs likes to be shot uh, pretty fast whereas the the sands usually like to be shot at around 960 or at least that's my recent experience so yeah that's uh that's uh, that's about it. All I had to say for uh, for this video about the Pantera. Uh, super thrilled about it. Can't wait to uh, to shoot it some more. And speaking of, uh, I'm not going home yet <laughs> today. I'm just finishing up the video because in here I have uh, something uh, that I, I'll be testing uh, today. And it actually goes in uh, in pretty close with these. These are earplugs <laughs> and. Uh, I'll be testing this uh, muscle brake from uh, Eagle Vision. Um, uh, I expect it to be very loud, but I'm very excited to see what it does to the accuracy of the Pantera. So, uh, yeah, 
lots of projects and uh, lots of uh, subscribers. Uh, I'm so happy that you decided to uh, to subscribe to um, my my channel. And um, if you haven't already done it, please go and hit that subscribe button. So with that said, that is the end of the review of the Pantera. So until next time, take care and shoot safe.